Every great creative work stands on the shoulders of giants. Welcome to Retro Inspection, where we examine and find out where the things we love today came from. Hi, welcome to Retro Inspectors. I'm Nick, with me is Russ, and today we're going to be talking about Andre Norton's 1958 time travel novel, The Time Traders. Russ, would you care to uh, give us a synopsis of the book? The Time Traders is a science fiction novel published in 1958 by Alice Andre Norton. We'll talk about that issue a little later. Um, but it chronicles a secret uh, US government project that uh, recruits special people to undertake a time traveling espionage uh, really adventure um, against the Reds or the Russians. And uh, in this book, we're introduced to Ross Murdoch, who is a, seems like a two-bit criminal, um, but for whatever reasons, and there, they do make it somewhat clear um, because of Ross's special abilities to uh, think his way out out of circumstances, to lay low, um, to really uh, infiltrate uh, certain organizations. He's uh, not necessarily recruited, but uh, uh, drafted into the service of this special group. Um, by Major Kilgarry's, I guess is his name. And uh, uh, essentially this time traveling group is sent back in time to find the Reds or the Russians um, latest uh, uh, time travel escapade of their own. And there's this kind of uh, not a, there's a, a time civil war, a time war going on. I don't want to mix my Star Trek up in this, but right. there's a time war um, where the Russians have found um, technologies that the US or NATO or, or the allied side doesn't have. Uh, they're trying to find the source of this uh, technology. Um, and basically, it's a it's a world um, where the U.S. and to some extent the, the the Soviets have not really established any kind of space uh, spacefaring um, uh, accomplishments yet. There was Sputnik and then Mutnik, but the U.S. hasn't been able to really get off the ground. Um, although they do have these fantastic technologies like um, atomic planes and things like that. They go incredibly fast. There's something going on in this particular novel where uh, space travel is just too difficult. However, something's going on with the Russians. They're finding that out. And um, they all of a sudden have this new technology. And the U.S. side is left having to recruit basically uh, ne'er-do-wells in order to find out in time uh, where the source of this Russian technology is coming from. And uh, you have uh, um, our main character, Ross Murdoch, is introduced to his partner in this. Uh, his name is Ash. And Ash is, uh, finds out later is this... Uh, very capable archaeologist, uh, anthropologist. And um, although it's never quite explained uh, how a non-spacefaring United States can um, time travel, they do end up time traveling from this base in the Arctic. Um, and they time travel back into prehistory uh, Great Britain and they assume the identities of beaker traders. And uh, from there, they are embroiled in the internecine battles of the various uh, tribal groups there. 
but those tribes are being driven by the Russians. Nick, you want to continue? Yeah, um, per Wikipedia, the, there, apparently the idea in the novels is that time travel technology and interstellar spaceflight technology are mutually exclusive. Civilization is either going to discover one or the other, and once it's got one of them, it can't get the other. So part of this is um, that people can use time travel, or at least you know the Russians presumably are, to go back in time to a point where aliens have made an incursion on the Earth and steals you know that technology from them, which is you know how they're I guess how they're starting to make their advancements, and the U.S. would like those as well. Hmm. I didn't get that from the book. No. And that may be no, I didn't. I, I, I didn't either. And I have read, uh, you know, I think two giant compendiums of her work that are, um, uh, you know, they're available from libraries and are, are yeah. very, very inexpensive. Uh, and uh, I didn't quite get that out of her. Or and that's, out, and that's out why of I qualified book. it. Okay, good. Um, uh, so, Nick, you want to add anything else other than that to this synopsis? Sorry, I was counting. Uh, in this series, uh, which is apparently broadly known as the Fine Agent series, it looks like there are eight books. And I have. Only, yeah, uh, I, I think I have read one and, and part four of or a five. successor. Yeah. So. Um, and uh, some of them follow. Uh, Ross Murdoch and Ash, but they they end up meeting um, and training various other people because through the events of this book, they end up finding the source of the Russian technology, and that that Russian technology allows them to then uh, conquer space. Uh, should we uh, talk about the? Well, yeah, are, are we spoiling like, another novel no, from 1958? I don't, okay. I don't think it, I don't. I don't think it ruins it to say that. You know, well, because I just said, you know, the Russians go back and find an alien spacecraft that crashed on Earth sometime in the distant past. It's never stated whether or not they were looking for it or they coincidentally found it and are you know, attempting to exploit this technology. Um, that, however, is spaceship is part of a fleet of a. Of a alien civilization, you know, known in the book as the Baldies, uh, just because of their appearance. They're, they're humanoid, but they're, you know, not quite grazed, but kind of big-eyed, kind of like, um, uh, ah, geez, the, the, the dummy that the, the little guy was using in Star Trek and the, the carbon mine. Oh, uh, Tranya. No, Tranya is the, the drink, the little guy. It begins with a B. I can't remember his name. Anywho. So the dummy that he was used, that he propped up in front of the screen, right, was right, scared, right. But you know, it, in my when I'm reading the book, that's what I envision when I when I think about these guys. Like, subscribe, repost, share everywhere. To see what else we're up to, visit xynobooks.com. Xenobooks.com.